Lamar Aismo video. And I know it's been a while. Um, I apologize for that, but uh, it's essentially life intervened. And uh, unlike most people, I, I don't uh, make a living out of doing this. I just do this as a public service, as a service to humanity, in hopes that more people will not necessarily think like I do, but um, have a, a better sense of justice and wanting to do what's right um, on, a, on a societal or a social level because a lot of uh, bad things on the horizon for the majority of the people in the world and not only for the people but for the planet. And I'm going to conclude that portion of this right there before I get too philosophical. I've been, this is my third take on this video and I went went to places that I didn't want to go. Um, but it, it's good to um, have people who appreciate watching my channel uh, and, and who uh, thinks, had one viewer said that it would be a shame, it'd be a loss um, if, if I were to uh, quit doing this because I have a good, good thing going. I was, I've been doing research because as I stated in a prior video, I wanted to, I, I want to explain why I believe, uh, basically I want to put some flesh on the skeleton of my political beliefs, uh, so to speak, because um, as many people know who are familiar with my channel, I always say that I'm a non-Marxist socialist, and um, you know some people may uh, find that. You know, it, 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 socialism has been beaten up in the media and, and even in the alternative media. So there's a negative impression. But um, I, I, I want to show why I have that belief that, you know, most people are average, including myself. Like they're, they're, rarely do we have these extraordinary geniuses with super high IQs because on, in the alternative media, the popular thing for the right wingers to do now is talk about uh, race and IQ and and that sort of thing. Like um, like IQ is is really a big factor in terms of uh, the the general population in a given place. Most people, as I stated, are average. You your Isaac Newtons, your Einsteins, Stephen Hawking's, uh, etc. are rare people. <laughs> you know, so. This whole um, whoever has the, the best IQ should reap all the rewards of society uh, needs to be left in the dustbin before it becomes really popular because it's another uh, blind alley that the fake alternative media, or actually no, I shouldn't say fake because they are the alternative media, that the, the alternative media wants, uh, wants you to follow, wants you to chase, you know, another dead end. Um, just like this whole notion of the globalist and not really calling out the major players and the people who pretend that um, the liberal versus conservative, uh, Democrat versus Republican thing is still a factor. All of those people are misleading. They're sheepdogs and gatekeepers. And by the end of this series, you'll see why. So without any further delay, because um, I, as I've also promised, I'm going to beat up a little bit less on the tribe. And um, for those who are not familiar with my channel, when I say the tribe, I mean the Hebrews or the people who um, claim descent from the uh, ancient Hebrews or those affiliated with their religion, because I usually uh, have a lot of criticism for them. But now I'm going to talk about non-Hebrews, and I suspect that I'm going to upset some people in this series because I'm going to entitle this series Empire of Liberty with a question mark because... We have this notion, and it's still popular, and it shouldn't be, that the United States of America, our country, is some sort of exceptional place that has a special destiny in the world. It's, it's like, um, it's like a, a messiah complex for an entire country. That's, that's a big problem in, in, in my view because as we're going to see with this series, uh, like, like most other places, <laughs> The United States is not exceptional uh, in its foundation or um, in its in its overall in its existence. Um, there, there's no. It's it's very, it's very typical. And for those who are going to get their, um, as they say, get their panties in the bunch, right? For me saying that, 
Uh, that's not to say that the United States of America is the worst country in the world. As I've also stated in prior videos, this is one of the better countries in the world to live in uh, in terms of um, your standard of living and the uh, relative liberty you, know, you can enjoy here. This is by far one of the, um, if you had to rank countries, this is definitely in the top uh, 50 for sure. So this isn't the worst place in the world, but uh, and this is where I'm going to make you uh, silly patriots mad. It's not the best place in the world either. Uh, there's a lot to be desired. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, let's, so let's start. And I wanted to um, use actual sources and quotes, but I think that's um, what I'll do is, is paraphrase and just speak from my memory. That way we don't get bogged down or delayed in technicalities and minutia of uh, documents. But what I will do um, and, and every follow-up to a video is I'll either display or name some of the sources that I do consult because a lot of it's going to be uh, actual knowledge that I have from mainstream history books and um, to, with, with my opinion and um, for, so strap on your seatbelt. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, the first inhabitants, uh, as the Canadians call them, in, on, in this continent, on this side of the planet, the Western Hemisphere, the first people in this hemisphere were the First Nations or First Peoples. I, I like that term better because um, it, it has no, um, in, uh, you know, um, imperialistic uh, <laughs> or, excuse me, imperialist connotations, no um, labeling people with things that they didn't call themselves because of the, the people who are the first people in, in this hemisphere uh, did not refer to themselves as Americans. It comes from uh, Americo Vespucci, uh, some, uh, I believe it was an Italian navigator, or it could have been Portuguese. Um, my memories are breaking down on me you know, on that point. But so the continent is named after this guy a uh, silly uh, tribesman, because he was a crypto tribesman slash uh, a proto racist Christopher Columbus actually uh, referred to the people, the indigenous peoples to this side of the world as Indians because he mistakenly thought that he had reached the other side of, of the world and was um, in East Asia, but uh, obviously he wasn't. From the very onset of that, they're, okay, let me backtrack again. So, uh, and, and that was a digression. But, so, okay, so you got these people crossing the Bering Straits. And then there may have been other sources for humans coming to the Western Hemisphere. But you had, um, you know, people coming from uh, the Eurasian continent via uh, the Bering Strait. But then also new, new theories point that perhaps they also came via the uh, Northern Seas uh, where... Of you know via because it was it was very uh, it was an ice age and perhaps they may have uh, crossed uh, that way as well. Uh, I've heard theories on that, but we'll stick with the Bering Strait um, for the most part. So those people and this is going to be for my African American uh, brethren who mistakenly want to label our race as the the First Nations here. That's a terrible mistake. It's a um, gross over-exaggeration of um, possible historical circumstances. And it is a disservice to us, and it's a disservice to the natives of this hemisphere. It's uh, misappropriating their culture, and um, it's, it, it needs to stop because you have this whole movement of African Americans that, that want to believe that uh, we're natives and uh, we're, we're the indigenous of the Western Hemisphere, and that's uh, baloney. But these people adopted to the various regions uh, of this continent and created ways of life for themselves that were sustainable. Uh, it wasn't a utopia. And, and by the way, these people were communal in most cases. They lived as a group. You know, the, the group was important for survival. There was no rugged individual. Um, I'm a good, uh, good uh, red-blooded capitalist. Uh, I can do it all myself. I don't need a society. I'm not responsible to society. It was let's work together, make this place habitable, and protect protect ourselves from rivals. With that being said, this was not a utopia. 
the Native Americans, or excuse me, the First Nations. See, I'm still trying to get that out of the vocabulary, but the First Nations here in the Western Hemisphere, they did not live in a utopia. They had uh, conflicts with each other, tribes against tribes. They had ways of solving it, sometimes uh, peacefully, but a lot of times uh, they got into warfare. And um, and when tribes were eliminated, because um, I've heard some people say, well, you had natives eliminating other native tribes, but that's a half truth. What ended up happening a lot of times was uh, the smaller tribes, if they were defeated, uh, sometimes they were enslaved, but then other times they were also uh, absorbed into, they, they would actually be forced, forcibly adopted into the tribe. So um, this is a gross exaggeration, um, but it's an example that I want to use because I think it's appropriate. You would have, because I'm a native of uh, Florida, you would have the Seminole Indians, if they were to get into a conflict with the Miccosukee um, Indians, and there, there's the imperialist uh, term, imperial term again. But um, these two groups of the Seminoles were the victor. The survivors from the Miccosukee would have would be adopted into. They would act. They would act be Seminoles. Um, so yeah, this this was no utopia. For one, there were rivalries for sure. Interestingly, according to a historian, I believe his name is Thornton. Uh, and again, I'll display some of the books in the next video. Uh, he actually said the indigenous people here in the Western Hemisphere had craft that could actually, they could at least navigate up and down the coast in some places. So, for example, the Powhatan, who were uh, native to what we now know as Virginia, the state of Virginia in the United States, they had... Um, uh, seaworthy uh, boats that they would use to, you know, to travel throughout the Chesapeake Bay area, as well as uh, up and down the coast in the Virginia area. Uh, we know this because he, he actually has an account from Portuguese people who colonized the Azores. And the Azores are islands in the Atlantic Ocean that were uninhabited until the Portuguese got there. No people there. Uh, one of those types of islands that had no native uh, population, no people had ever reached there prior to the Portuguese. They have actual written accounts. And this is where you people who want to um, crap on history and dismiss history and, and, and pretend like um, historians and historical research and history books are invalid. This, this flies right in your face. There's written evidence of uh, Portuguese people in the Azores talking about strange men from the West washing up on their island in, in these weird boats that they never seen, canoe-like boats. So Native Americans, at the very least, used to end up being shipwrecked, not only in the Azores, but also on the mainland Europe. I think the Iberian Peninsula as well. Uh, uh, the, I'll, I'll show the, the Thornton book uh, next, uh, next video. But, you know, and I, and I say that to say this. Native Americans, or excuse me, or First Nations of the Western Hemisphere, including South Americans, could have reached what we call the Old World, the Eastern Hemisphere, the um, Eurasia and, and Africa. And then really, all those continents were connected. Uh, the uh, African continent was connected to Asia via the um, where the Suez Canal is. So I find it funny that... Um, you know that's that's not really um, you know paid attention to. I, it, it, it's crazy, but it, it gets, goes to show you the efforts that we make to separate ourselves from each other, so that we can uh, claim supremacy and uh, instead of uh, brotherhood. We have three continents that were really connected, as so essentially it's one continent. But I digress. So natives, if some of them were shipwrecked and 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 landed dead, I mean, how many? cases could there have been of natives actually reaching the old world and perhaps uh, being adopted into some African tribes or, or who, who knows. I mean, that's a possibility, but um, I digress because the same thing happened the other way. The reason, and I'll conclude this video with this, the reason that African Americans believe that uh, Native Americans or um, First Nations were, were African because there are accounts of Africans uh, ended, ending up shipwrecked in the, in the Western Hemisphere.
totally plausible. But see, as you as we can see that that this worked both ways, um, as well as uh, others reaching this continent before Christopher Columbus, you had um, Leif Erikson. And there's reports that the Chinese may have reached the Aleutians. I'm going to conclude the video here. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.